Hey guys, it's your boy Ken. Today we are going to be doing a PC optimization for Intel system for people who has 13 gen or 14 gen uh, CPU. I have been getting a lot of requests to do this part and this will be my last video about these type of things because you know I already did a BIOS guide for Gigabyte boards or Aorus boards and then Asus now we're just doing a optimization part now one thing i would like to mention is that your results will not be the same as mine because i have a 2d motherboard meaning i can push like higher ram frequency intel scales well with faster ram so the faster the ram the more fps you're gonna get okay just showing you my settings once again um, make sure your settings are stable your cpu is stable your memory is stable you guys need to perform like stress tests you know just to make sure you are 100 percent stable because sometimes i've seen people have um unstable memory causing like one percent low drop or fps drops in general but this is my summer settings um i usually run 5.8 for the P cores, but this time around I'm running 5.7. Make sure you lock your cores or sync your cores. Running 4.4 on the E cores, and then in the uh, CPU configuration, I just want to let you guys know that I am running this CPU without hyper threading on. Um, I don't need hyper threading because I already have 16 E cores. Also, you want to make sure you disable virtualization technology in the BIOS because if you disable this, the core isolation turns off as well. The core isolation affects your FPS. Like if you have core isolation on or like memory integrity, um, your FPS is going to be lower um, because it's very taxing on the system. So turning the virtualization technology gives you uh, more performance. That's like the best explanation I could come up with. Also make sure to disable VTD. Also I don't have rebar on. I'm on Windows 10 22H2. I have a hardware acceleration, GPU scheduling um, off, and then I don't use rebar. Honestly guys, just search VTD actually. Like, I forgot where to find this. So search VTD, make sure this is also disabled. And then lastly, make sure to, where's my DRAM timing control? Like if you want to improve your FPS more, um, you can't just raise your speed to like 7200 and then call it a day, right? You need to tune your timings. So you guys can see I'm running 640. TRFC and then TRFC PB 520, 32767 on my Treffy and then my SAP timings are here. It's not the tightest, but um, I just don't like doing BIOS stuff, right? Because it's just like memory tuning, in my opinion, is insanely time consuming. But anyways, that's for the BIOS. Um, we are now heading to Windows. So if you install a new Windows, you don't need to buy a license. You can just activate it uh, via PowerShell. Um, I can't put that on YouTube, I think, because it's literally piracy and that is a crime. So you guys just need to look for it. How to activate Windows using PowerShell. But anyways, um, just a disclaimer, if you reinstall Windows, chances are you might not have a LAN driver available. So make sure before you reinstall your new operating system, either 22H2 Windows 10 or 23H2 Windows 11, make sure to have this ready. You need to download a LAN driver so you can connect to the internet. So the only thing you need for drivers is the LAN and chipset. Uh, you can download the latest one, the Intel Management Engine Interface, and then the Intel chipset driver. That's the only driver you need for your Intel CPU. Anything else, it's optional. Um, if you need all these Bluetooth, Thunderbolt, um, then download them, right? So next up, we are gonna install um, our 
NVIDIA driver. If you are an NVIDIA, if you're an AMD, I am very sorry, but um, I can't help you on that one. I don't have my 9070 XT anymore. So anyways, download NV clean install, manually select driver version. I'm on 50 series. I have a 5070 Ti on my Intel rig. And all you need to do is look for this current driver version, the 572.83. This is the best and stable driver version for all the games that I play. Dota 2, CS2, Valorant, Apex Legends, um, Blacksmith Wukong works perfectly fine as well, and PUBG. So click on manually select a driver version. Look for 572.83. This one right here with a desktop on it. Select that, click next. For the components to install, all you really need to do is just click next because you don't want any telemetry or any other bullshit that comes with the NVIDIA app, right? You don't want NVIDIA app too. Like if you need to record gameplay, just use OBS, replay buffer. So click next. So once that is done, all you need to do is Disable installer telemetry and advertising, perform a clean installation, disable Ansel, show expert tweaks, disable driver telemetry, enable message signal interrupts, disable NVIDIA HD audio device sleep timer, disable HDCP, and then you see this use method compatible with EC anti-cheat, click on this, and then automatically accept the driver and side warning. Click next. install agree and continue custom and then perform a clean installation and that's it for your nvidia drivers i already have it so i don't have to do that so next up you want to debloat your operating system so open up powershell run it as administrator and then i'm going to put the script in the description box below but all it does is it debloats your system. Um, shout out to Chris Tits, Chris Titus, Chris Titus. But follow my cursor here on the top left. It says install. You want to click on tweaks. Click on standard. Now, I like to start on the right side on the customized preferences. You can, you know, customize it to your preference. But I like to just disable everything. Turn on dark theme for Windows. And then scroll down on the advanced tweaks, disable IPv6, disable background apps, disable full screen optimization, disable copilot. I don't use copilot, disable Intel MM, set performance to display, set display for performance. And I also like to block Razer software install because my webcam is from Razer. Um, one drive i like to remove one drive and yeah that's about it and then just hit run tweaks and it will create a restore point let it do its thing and then after that click on run oh shut up 10 actions apply only recommended settings since you already made a restore point with the previous tweaks that you did you don't really need this so just click no but you can also make another one if you want to and then that's it Next up is um, your power plan. Um, on Windows 10, you should be running Ultimate Performance. I just haven't changed it because I just installed this uh, Windows 10 22H2. But on the hard disk, uh, turn off hard disk after zero. Put uh, zero as value. 
because we don't want it to shut off. It's just we're disabling all the power savings. So wireless adapter settings, maximum performance. Uh, this helps if you are on Wi-Fi. USB settings, USB selective suspend settings. I set it to disabled. And then PCI Express link state power management. I set it to off. And then processor power management. Um, I, I'm running the Savvy Tracks tweak. This processor performance time check interval. Um, just download Process Explorer, and then uncheck the look for the processor performance time check interval. Uncheck it, and then it should show up on your power plan. Um, this doesn't really help with the FPS, but I don't know if it's placebo or not. But it just feels like the Windows is a lot more snappier. So whatever. Um, after that, restart your system. So once you're back in Windows, you want to configure your NVIDIA settings. So first, you want to go to Manage 3D Settings. Um, these are my settings. Just copy them. Image scaling off, ambient occlusion off, anisotropic filtering off. Everything is basically off. <laughs> Open Geo rendering GPU, set it to your GPU. Power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Um, make sure vertical sync is set to off. Texture filtering quality performance. But yeah, um, here is what it looks like. So if you play 1280 by 960 stretched, you want to go to adjust desktop size and position. You want to go to scaling at number two. You want to select full screen and then make sure this is set to GPU and then check this box, this override the scaling mode set by games and programs and then hit apply. Um, what this do is it just makes sure you're stretched like all the way and you don't have any black bars. So another thing is you can also cap your FPS using the NVIDIA frame limiter um based on what i've seen this increases your one percent lows and 0.1 percent lows so in order to do that all you need to do is go to nvidia control panel manage 3d settings and then click on add and then look for cs2 add selected program so the only thing you need to look for is this max frame rate so set this to on and then i have a 360 hertz monitor so you can play around with it you can start at like 500 or 550 or 600 just find the sweet spot okay so let me demonstrate this for you so first let's try it with off settings oh by the way before you do that um you want to make sure you have this launch option threads nine no reflex um plus fps max zero obviously you're gonna need console so you need to put dash console here and allow third-party software so if you want to run obs to you know clip your gameplay um you need to have this allow third-party software and don't worry you are not gonna get banned unless you use a spin bot then obviously you are gonna get banned As you guys can see, CS2's optimization is dog shit because like, if you look at my FPS, it says 1,097, 1,100 FPS. But look at our 1% lows, it's at 314 and my 0.1% lows is only at like 200 and it even goes down to 171. So this is what it looks like without any FPS cap. Remember this number, 305 on the 1% lows and then 305 as well or like slightly lower than that for the 0.1% lows. And then our average is like 1,094. So we are gonna cap it to 600 using the NVIDIA frame limiter. So going back, you wanna go to the max frame rate, select on and then let's try 600. 600. Then press OK, then hit apply, then restart your CS2. Now going back in this corner, obviously same preset, we have 600 FPS cap and look at our 1% lows. We are now at 522, our 0.1% lows at 400 plus. So yeah, if you want to give this a try, go ahead. Um, does it feel smoother? Honestly, it's really hard to tell for me because um, 
I'm on 360 hertz monitor, but maybe in an actual match, um, it might actually feel smoother. I just haven't had the time to play CS2 lately. So yeah, um, that's it for the optimization. And I hope I help everyone. Um, if you like the content, you want to see gaming mice review, gaming keyboard review, or gaming audio review, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching.